Welcome to the tracking tutorial for Faceware Analyzer. The way Analyzer works is that we, the user, create training frames on the extreme poses to generally tell the software how the face looks. The software then uses these to create a statistical model of how the actor's face moves and writes the in-between frames based on that model. In Analyzer, we work in three separate what we call markup groups. The eyes, the brows, and the mouth. You can switch between these with this drop-down menu in the toolbar. The face contains all of the three aforementioned markup groups, but it's not used for work. It's just there as a way to review your shot when you've finished. So never actually do work in the face group. You should generally start with the eyes group, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, now we'll move the landmarks for the eyes, and that includes the nose, onto the face uh, at the most extreme poses. Um, we'll just put one at the beginning for posterity's sake. But for the eyes, you want to look for things like blinks, extreme pupil movements, you know, eyes wide open, that sort of thing. Now as we move the landmarks around, you see a green marker appear on the timeline that denotes a training frame. Training frame is a frame that you've created to tell Analyzer this is what this shape looks like. Use this when creating your model. So as soon as you manually place a training uh, landmark rather on the training frame, it will automatically create one on the timeline. Now, we can move the points one at a time, but that's a bit slow. Fortunately, we have what we call intelligent drag. You can choose intelligent drag mode here from the drop down menu in the toolbar, or as I prefer, and I recommend, hold shift while you're dragging landmarks around. So I'll hold the shift key, and now you can see landmarks begin to approximate the shape of their given markup group, in this case, the eyes. Intelligent drag only affects points that you haven't moved already. So for these ones that are green, won't move automatically. These ones will until I place them where I want. Intelligent drag allows you to quickly get the shapes you're looking for. For the eyes, you want to put your points on the corners here, directly in between the corners, at the open parts of the eyelid. And for the irises, you want them to be straight across the middle and with the, each point on the edge of the color. And for the nose, generally speaking, you want one down the bottom of the nose and then at the top of each nostril. As a general rule, we're looking for consistency in placement. Uh, the more consistent, the better, and the better and cleaner the uh, resulting tracking will be. So here he's looking to his left. So we'll use intelligent drag and create training frame here. Quickly do this. And now he's looking to more to his right. Again, this guy doesn't make any really extreme poses, but the same principles apply. So another way to create a training frame is you can go to something you've already created, select the whole thing, control C to copy. We'll find where he's looking to the right, and we'll control V to paste. Notice there's a training frame now on the timeline. We just make a few minor adjustments. It's up to you when you use intelligent drag versus another mode. But copying and pasting is good for similar shapes. Intelligent drag is good to create entirely new shapes. Let's see, we'll put another one. He kind of squints here a bit. Let's see, we'll make another one right here. Very quickly using intelligent drag. Okay, so now that we have the training frames we want to start out with, uh, we're going to tell the software to use these frames to build its model. Uh, we call this training, and you can press the training button up here in the toolbar, or hit F5 to start it, which I will do. It takes a few moments depending on how many training frames you have. We only have a few, so it's very quick. Okay, hit OK when it's complete. And now the track option is no longer grayed out. Uh, hitting track will write to the in-between frames, because you can see right now they're still blank. So you can hit track or hit F7. And again, it'll take a few moments depending on how long the shot is. So that's finished. So we'll go to the beginning, hit play. You can see that the eyes are tracked 
throughout the whole shot. That said, they're not perfect. You can see here, the pupils are way off. And also here, when he's looking extreme to the other side. That's okay. It's good to start with a few training frames and then work your way up. That way you don't create too many unnecessary ones. So now we'll just fix what's wrong with these. Grab this. Grab this, drag it over a bit. Where's the other one? Right about here. Drag that over. Okay, that's fine. And you can see again, it created a couple of new training frames. We hit F5 to train. Now you can see that it's of six total. And we hit OK, hit F7 to track. Hit OK. Go to the beginning, control space to play. And now, when we look at it, it's right here. You can see it's still a little wonky. But that's okay. That's what this process is. So we'll just fix that and just fix that a bit. Now, Six, I just want to fix this little bit of the timeline here. I can hold control and select this area. I'll train it like I did before. Hit OK, but this time instead of hitting F7 or this button, I'm going to go to the track menu and hit track selected. That'll only write to this little area that's selected. So it only fixes the problem we have. So that looks good to me. So the eyes are done. So that's, you know, seven training frames for a 125 frame shot. That's where you can start to see the power of Analyzer, creating a lot of data from a minimum of user input. If we're unhappy with the results, we just add more training frames like we did before, then train and track again, and you repeat this until you're satisfied with the results. It should hit all the shapes without excess popping or jittering or any movement that doesn't reflect the actor. Uh, now that the eyes are done, we're going to select the three nose landmarks here and go to the edit menu and hit lock landmarks or control L. You can now see that they are grayed out and I can't move them. I can grab them and lock or unlock them, but I can't actually move them. The reason for this is that the nose is in all three of the markup groups, the eyes, mouth, and brows. And locking it after finishing one means that you won't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, it also helps to anchor the other groups and give a more accurate track, which is the reason we start with the eyes, because the eyes move the least. So we throw in the nose with the eyes, lock it, and we don't have to worry about it again for the mouth or the brows. Now, to save a little bit of time, I've loaded up the finished shot, and I'm going to show you where I put the brow training frames. I only had to use three of them to get the tracking for the whole shot, which is pretty good. 125 frames of tracking, three training frames as you can see. I mean, again, he doesn't do anything really crazy. His eyes are kind of neutral, and then they go up, and then he has a little bit of movement in his right brow right around here, which I caught with this training frame. When you're making brow training frames, you can put the points, you know, here, or here, or here, or wherever you can see. For me, you know, I see this hair here, and this hair here, so that's where I put them. As long as you do that for each of the training frames, that's fine. So if you happen to be able to see, you know, this one and want to use that and make the brows shaped more like this, that's fine as long as you do that for each training frame. Brows will usually not require as much work overall or as many training frames overall as the other groups. As long as you're consistent, the brows should use relatively few training frames. But you need at least three to train at any given point for any markup group. No matter how little movement there is, you need at least three training frames for it to work. So I set these frames, you know, I train once again, and I track, I hit OK, and that is that for the brows. Now we will move on to the mouth. So again, to save time, I've already done it. We can take a look here at the training frames that I've created. 
We have closed mouths. We have some asymmetry, like an oo kind of thing going on. Uh, wider open. The general rule is if the mouth is closed, then the landmarks, the inner landmarks, should be touching. Same thing applies for blinks with the eyes. So if I wanted to make, you know, a training frame here, using Intelligent Drag, grab the corners, pull it to the corners, outer and inner. Keep these fairly close together. Move this as a group to the top. Move the inner middle points, then space these points out evenly between them. And there we go. Here's your average mouth training frame. And we would repeat the process we did for the other groups. Make training frames, train it, track it, and go through it and see where it needs to be fixed. Add any more training frames, train it, track it again, repeat until we are satisfied with the mouth result. So I train, and I track, and we look at the mouth. And that's tracking pretty well. Again, I did this earlier, so it should be. There we go. Again, the thing you want to keep in mind when making your training frames is that you want to start with as few as you think you can get away with. You really only want one per shape. So the beginning, you know, when you make an ooh, or the actor makes an ooh, put one at the ooh, but don't put one at every ooh after that. And same thing for a big wide open mouth or whatever the shape may be. Start with just the bare minimum you think you need. And then train and track and add as it becomes apparent you need more in a specific spot where it's missing a shape. That way it'll keep the total number of training frames down, which will make it take less time to track, and it'll give you less jittery results. The more you add shapes to the same similar shape, the more confusion it kind of causes for the software. But we're finished with this shot now, so we're just going to go to the face group, click home to zoom out, and take a look at it. And it looks pretty good. I think that's ready for animation, so we're going to parameterize the shot now. Parameterization will be discussed in our next video tutorial.